All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Freight Waves Live. I'm Jesse Merritt, VP of Sales at Reliance Partners. And joining me today is Brandon Richards, our Chief Sales Officer, also with Reliance Partners. Welcome, Brandon. Hey, Jesse. Glad to be here. Excited to be, uh, be on the, the fireside chat this morning. Great, great. Great to have you. Thanks so much. Absolutely. So let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. Let's Let's talk a little bit about what's going on in trucking, what's impacting insurance pricing, and how we can improve it, right? So let's do it. You know, I think we should, I think we should touch on the reptile theory and nuclear verdicts. I know there's a lot of data out there. There are already a lot of interviews out there on these topics, but we can't have a conversation about insurance pricing without touching on these. So why don't, why don't you, why don't you touch on nuclear verdicts? What's a nuclear verdict? Yeah, let's just start off. So nuclear verdicts, you know, traditionally a nuclear verdict out there in the, in, in the, uh, in the U S is going to be anything that it, traditionally they define it as anything over $10 million uh, that's been awarded. Um, I personally believe that, that it really doesn't have to do with the dollar amount so much as it has to do with the circumstance. You know, I think you could have a two or three or four million dollar verdict that's also considered a nuclear verdict based on the circumstances, um, based on what was the claim. Should it have been a claim that settled at 200,000 and settled at, at two and a half million? Uh, to me, that would be a nuclear verdict in the sense that it, it settled for way higher than what it should have. And, and part of that has to do with what you mentioned. You know, uh, plaintiff attorneys out there have, have become extremely um, targeted in the way they go after the transportation industry. We've got, uh, there, there's literally seminars and classes being taught all across the country to teach plaintiff attorneys how to win in court for, um, and how to win big. And, and they use the reptile theory, like you mentioned, and, you know, which is basically just, just using the primal brain of the person or getting into the primal brain of the person in the courtroom to make them feel like they should be on the side of the of the attorneys because, well, yeah, I agree with, with that concept because, yeah, they weren't safe. And if they're not safe, that could hurt me or my neighbor or, you know, my friends. And so we, we need to be on board with with uh, being on that. The problem is they're not really looking at the circumstances of, of that accident. They're looking at everything else out there except for the circumstances that accident in a lot of times. So it, it really is, uh, you know, has been damaging to these verdicts and, and has been successful in the way that they, they do it. Right. Right. You're right about that. And you know what? That practice of putting the trucking company itself on trial, right? And every choice they've ever made, every driver, driver they've ever hired, every, you know, inclement weather condition they've ever put a truck on the road. And it's it's all on trial and not just the accident itself. So speaking of which, We've got HB 19 in Texas that is going to go to the Senate. And as we talk about the ways that we can positively impact these insurance pricing challenges, I think HB 19 is, you know, at the top of the list. So my, my favorite part of that legislation is that they're going to have a, a first part of the trial and a second part of the trial where um, in the first part of the trial, you can only talk about the fault of the accident, right? And then not until that second portion of the trial, can you get into um, allegations of unsafe practices of the trucking company, anything like that. So how do you think that that's going to impact, positively impact um, nuclear verdicts in Texas? Well, I, I, I think it's going to help stop some of the rampant uh, abuse out there in, in the courtrooms. Um, you know, and I think that that uh, reform like this really does help balance things again and, and make it where it's fair in the, in the civil system. Because let's face it, there's been awards out there for accidents that have happened where the trucking company wasn't even at fault, but ended up being deemed uh, at fault in the court for millions and millions of dollars based on circumstances that were brought in that had nothing to do with that accident. So I, I, I do agree that I think it's a, it's, it's a great bill. I think it's going to help change. And I think once it uh, does finish passing here in Texas, which it passed the House by a large margin, um, I think it's going to continue to go to other states and other states are going to follow suit and, and we'll be able to get some reform out there. 
Um, and, or at least that's my hope, you know, to, to help curb some of this, this lawsuit abuse that's been going on. Agreed. I agree. And, you know, there are there are a handful of other things that motor carriers can do to, you know, kind of control their own destiny from a pricing standpoint. Um, but just a few things that we can touch on technology, um, you know, really understanding the policy that they're buying, things like that. What do you recommend from a technology standpoint or, you know, what are you seeing motor carriers do that's that's having a positive impact? Well, you know, and, and, and this all comes back to, you know, we're talking about rising, um, increased rising costs, right? I, I mean, if you look at the insurance into the commercial auto industry, the loss ratio has not been under 100 percent for the last 10 years. So as an industry, the loss ratio keeps going up, which in, in turn makes it where insurance companies are having to adjust and, and charge higher premiums to trucking companies. Even trucking companies that uh, traditionally have a very safe record and have a good loss ratio are seeing massive increases on their policy renewals um, over the last 10 years just because the industry is running hot. Um, and it's running hot because of what we talked about previously with attorneys and, and verdicts and lawsuits. Um, but there's a lot of things that are coming out. So just like you mentioned, what, what is technology doing these days? We have a lot of insure tech that's come on the market. And insure tech just simply means, you know, just, just people that are using technology or insurance companies that are using technology um, in their insurance product. And, you know, so there's a lot of different ways they're doing that. You know, we've got telematic systems. We've got cameras that, that uh, insurance companies are incorporating into the insurance product these days. We've got, um, we've got usage-based insurances coming onto the market where depending on your performance and the usage that you have, you'll get charged accordingly to, to your safety performance and how you, you've performed in that month. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of interesting things that are happening. We've got some new insurance companies that we're working with that, uh, that are advancing these, these types of insure tech products. And I think that's one of the things that's really going to help in the marketplace with driving some of the cost down. I agree. I agree. I want to circle back to a couple of things that you said, uh, cameras in particular. I mean, I don't know about you, Brandon, but I wouldn't drive a truck without a camera. Uh, it no way. protects the driver so much. And, you know, I suppose the first couple of days I might be a little bit self-conscious about my, you know, singing along to the radio or singing in the truck. But the first time it saved my butt, if somebody comes into my lane and then we pull over and they say, you came over on me and we roll that tape back and I say, no, 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 you came into my lane. I mean, that that would give me so much security as a driver to know that I'm the professional and, you know, I'm able to demonstrate that I'm practicing safe driving. You know, I'm, I'm the one who is in the right. I, I would absolutely not, not drive without a camera. And then the other thing that you, oh, go ahead, Brandon. I was just going to say, you know, it's, it's what you're getting at. They say a picture is worth a thousand words and maybe I'll say a video is worth 10,000. Um, you know, it's, and, and the beauty of it is it's an event recorder. So it's something that takes a snapshot in that time so that you can use that for that purposes. And there's some really good technology out there with cameras that can can do a lot of predictive analysis and, and give, auditory, um, give audible beeps to the driver if something's happening or if a vehicle is doing things in front of them that's erratic or, or if a speed changes. So there's a lot of technology out there that, that's really being used on this. And there's a lot of data being being taken from it. It's great. That's right. That's right. And to your point about some programs that are available now, you know, insurance companies, it's these cameras are saving them a lot when it comes to going to court and being able to um, prove definitively that their insured was not at fault. And so for that reason, we're seeing a lot of insurance companies either incentivize motor carriers to use these cameras or, um, you know, they're chipping in toward their camera budget. So that the program that you mentioned where there's a little bit of a, um, I guess we can call it a sliding scale or, um, you know, the ability to midterm improve their insurance pricing and what they're paying. Um, but it doesn't adjust up there there's no way for their pricing to go above their starting rate is that right that's correct yeah those types of programs out there have a benchmark that they have and and so the benchmark is is set here 
Um, that, that's, that's where the top is. It can go down based on performance, but it will never go above what that benchmark is during that, during that policy period. So, you know, it's, it's not like they're going out there and saying, hey, you might be this, you might be that. No, it it's really is, um, is standardized in, in the sense that, that they have some, some normalcy to it. But there are things that play in to say, hey, if you perform well, we're going to reward you. And that's really what it's about is, is rewarding trucking companies with that. And, there, and there's, I mean, to your point, the cameras is one thing. Telematics is another. Um, but, you know, it's also about, you know, the, the biggest thing we can do is prevention, right? And how do, you, how do you address prevention? That's done through loss control training, through safety training. Um, that's one of the reasons that Reliance Partners, we, um, we have an amazing team of loss control and safety safety experts here on our team that help our clients with those issues and help them go in and do driver training, uh, driver, um, you know, protocols, driver, um, you know, and, and, and let's face it, a driver is a big portion of what's going on here. So if we can help trucking companies with improving the drivers and, and the way that the drivers see things through defensive driving, through safety, um, safety habits, then that goes a long way, and that that really does have a huge impact on what what we're talking about, a huge impact on rates, um, and, and and really helps in the long run. Yeah, I agree with you, and it's it's so nice to have those safety professionals on staff, and you're not relying on the insurance carrier. Now, I'll say that our insurance carrier partners have great loss control staff. But there's something really nice about it being your own team, right? And you can bounce ideas off of some safety professionals who have driven millions of miles in a truck and really have that experience and know what it's like to be a driver because um, it's it's not an easy life to be a driver. And we're so grateful um, that so many folks have chosen that profession because it's how we get all of our stuff. And, um, you know, to circle back to a few other things that insureds can do to um, both reduce their pricing and also understand it and be able to predict it. You know, let's let's get into the mind of an underwriter for a minute. Let's get into the mind of an actuary. You know, we always say that, um, prior loss history really does predict the future. And so what are some things that you tell your insureds for how to understand how their, um, how their rate is put together? Um, you know, some of the things that impact their pricing and, and what underwriters are looking at. Well, I mean, there's several things that impact pricing. Um, some things you can control, some things you can't, right? Um, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to insurance companies are looking at safe practices. They're looking at historical claim data, um, not just the severity of the claim, but also the frequency of the claims that they have. And in most cases, frequency is much more important to an underwriter than severity is. Um, you know, you could have one bad accident that, you know, kind of like one of these nuclear verdicts we're talking about. Does it hurt? Yes. But is it something that underwriters are going to look at and go, OK, you had one bad accident you're gone. No, they're going to look at the historical. Was there multiple accidents that led to one bad one? Um, or was it truly just one one loss or, or a, a, you know, maybe another minor loss in there somewhere? So they're looking at the whole picture of that. They're also looking at the driver pool. You know, or, or what are your driver hiring standards? Um, what are your training standards? What are your driver's, uh, you know, background look like on the drivers? Are you hiring drivers that, that have known... Um, known violations in their past, you know, and that's one of the th reasons that, that plaintiff attorneys have been so successful is because when they do dig in to these trucking companies, they, they realize, okay, there, there's things that we can nitpick here and say you had bad hiring practices. Now, whether it was bad hiring practices or not, they're going to say that. So the best thing you can do is avoid that by coming up with good policies, good procedures, and making sure that you stick to to your procedures when you are hiring and training drivers and, and uh, um, you know, uh, maintaining that uh, those files, so that's a big part of what what underwriting is looking at as well. Um, they're also looking at the lanes and the routes that they drive, you know, just to see what part of the country they're in. Is there going to be mountainous conditions, inclement weather? Is there going to be? Uh, are they going through major cities on a regular basis? Um, so you know, a lot of that plays into the rates that are developed, and that's where a good agent can really dig in and, and instead of just saying, "Hey, here's 
one, two, and three, you can dig in and give a story to the to the underwriters to say, look, this is what who they are, this is how they operate, and this is what makes them safe. This is where they're going through, and so really just give the whole picture of who they are as a trucking company uh, to present that. Right, right, agreed, a hundred percent agreed, and also you know one of the great pieces of news in recent weeks and months is um, freight is up. And uh, I, yeah, our customers are doing great. And so I think that a lot of people are going to be surprised when they get to renewal time or, um, you know, as they're looking at their upcoming policy period, I hope that folks will take a close look at um, their IFTA reporting for the last couple of quarters in particular and be careful about um you know, how, how they look at their policy structure and those mileage reporters and, um, and make sure they're accurate. You know, I don't know if, I don't know if you've ever been, um, you know, going over quotes for a renewal with an insured and you see maybe things aren't always apples to apples, right? If you're looking at the projected premium for the upcoming policy period on three different quotes, you want to make sure that everybody's using the same miles, right? Yeah, you use the same underwriting criteria, you know, whether that's mileage or, or power unit based. If it is miles, make sure you understand the mileage, make sure you understand, um, you know, is there a minimum mileage within the policy, um, you know, is and, and what the policy outlines are. So, you know, always, always do a review. And, and again, that's where it comes down to having the right partner in your corner. Um, and making sure you have an advocate for you that can explain these things to you. Ask questions, ask questions, ask questions, um, you know, and it really will make a difference in the long run with how you make your decision. Because, uh, you know, it's, it, Jesse, we both know that, that sometimes the, the dollar amount on paper up front is not the dollar amount you're going to end up paying in the end. And so it, it, it makes a huge difference to look at that. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of um, the programs that are, that are really out there right now are, are I think the, the industry is shifting towards um, you know, a different type of policy for, for clients. And, and there's a lot of clients out there that are even taking on more retention than they ever have um, internally and taking on some of the risks themselves to drive some of the costs down. So that's something else that's been happening that we're seeing quite a bit of. And, and it really just depends on what works for you and your company, right? Um, you've got to make sure it fits your budget and fits your the outline of what you're trying to do, um, whether you're, you're on a first dollar program or whether you have a retention program, making sure you understand the parameters of that policy to understand how that policy operates, how it works, how it responds, and uh, and really just, you know, educating yourself on what is being delivered to you. Right. I agree with you. There there are so, so many ways that you can educate yourself and um, to your point, taking on a little bit more risk, you know, insureds who are very responsible, very safe, and are a victim of these rising insurance costs, they can bet on themselves and take a little bit of retention, take a little bit of deductible, share in that risk with the insurance carrier and, um, you know, kind of control their own destiny a little bit in that way. We absolutely encourage that. Absolutely. Well, and, you know, it's it, it, it all comes down at the end of the day is goes right back to what we're talking about, which is increasing insurance cost um, litigation and and trying to hedge against those things, right? And, and the way to hedge against it is just to realize that um, it really starts with, with you first. You know, as, as a trucking company, you've got to start with the safety culture and then you've got to partner with the right insurance company. And then, you know, just looking at all the, the advances in, in technology that are out there and implementing them and using them and, and really just doing everything you can as a carrier to embrace the the tools that are available to you. And and look, I'll be the first to admit it's it's not always fair, right? How many times have we seen people do all the right things and still end up on the short end of the stick? Um, it's unfortunate, but hopefully we can start moving towards an environment where it, that becomes less and less frequent. And we can we can really uh, make an impact to to start driving things back down and, and get us in a in a better environment. All right. Well, Brandon, thank you so much for your time today. I always enjoy talking about trucking insurance with you and, and all of the great things coming down the pike and all the ways that we can help our insureds reduce their cost and um, keep on trucking. Jesse, it's always a good time. I'm always excited to be on here. And uh, 
to the Freight Waves world. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, we look forward to talking and seeing you soon. Absolutely. Take care.